Yeah, hi there, and these comments are for P.Y., and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the online TOEFL course, The Seven Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT. You're also one of my students at California State University, San Bernardino, and thank you for completing the uh, integrated speaking practice test number 11. Let's hear what you have to say. The lecture talks about how teachers can make learning more enjoyable and fun for their students and the benefits. It thinks that various studies have shown that students learn faster when the teaching is done interactively. For example, while teaching a student the basics of addition, he will learn it faster if the teaching is done by asking a student to pick out themes, such as pencils, the number of which is equal to the solution of the problem. Now again, you're using exactly the same grammar from the lecture there. You have memorized that. Now that's not going to help you with your TOEFL score because what you're trying to do you're trying to show that you can paraphrase. Paraphrase means that you can restate something using your own vocabulary and your grammar and you're not doing that when you say this. The number of which is equal to the solution of the problem. There are two benefits. The first is the students do not get bored and are able to concentrate on the subject being taught for longer durations. Now, something that you want to work on right now is when you're speaking, you're putting pretty much equal stress on almost all the words in the sentence. Now, that's not sentence rhythm. That's not what we talked about in our class last week. Sentence rhythm is the combination of stress and unstressed words in the language, right? So uh, I think that you need to work on that a little bit. I'll talk about that more when we get to the end of your practice test. Second, the students... Now, one thing that you did, though, you said there's kind of two methods or two benefits. You said first and second. That was good. That was effective how you did that because then it makes it easier for the audience to understand what you're saying. Be confident with their teacher. And you need to consider their teacher as someone who is there just to give them work. This helps them to listen more effectively to what the teacher is saying. The same way they would listen to their friends. Okay, so you're pretty good right now at memorizing. You're good at memorizing what you listen to, but you're not so good at restating it using your own vocabulary and, and your own grammar, so you want to be more comfortable being able to paraphrase and summarize other people's ideas, so you probably, in order to do better with that, you have to improve your vocabulary and your grammar. So maybe your vocabulary and grammar limitations, they might be preventing you from being able to accurately and effectively paraphrase other people's ideas. So what do you do? Well, here's what you do. Go through my vocabulary lesson number three. That's a great start. That'll introduce you to about 200 pretty basic words, words that we use when we speak and when we write. Learn those words. That's very, very important. Now, once you do that, you can also do some practice at the uh, grammar <laughs> lesson number seven and you can learn a little bit more about sentence structure you can get used to different kinds of structure sentence there's sentence structures that we can use and so on now the other thing I wanted to mention is to help you with your pronunciation I'm gonna be honest with you, you got you got some work ahead of you you cannot solve these problems easily but you can solve them that's the key it is possible now if you Keep watching a lot of movies. I know you're doing that. Make sure you read newspapers on a regular basis. That's going to give you some good exposure to vocabulary and grammar. Watching movies is good for your pronunciation, right? Now, at my website, focus in, in sentence rhythm and intonation. I think both of those areas are, are things that you can improve on right now. That means lesson number 33, 34, 35... Also lesson 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Now, each of those lessons, there will be practice exercises where you can record your voice. Record your voice. Why do you want to do that? 
because you'll become more aware of your own strengths and weaknesses with pronunciation. The more aware you become, the more likely you are to be able to change those problems in the future. You see what I'm saying? All right, anyway, thank you very much for completing this practice test. So like I said before, you had some problems with, uh, in this one with your delivery, you had some problems with your topic development in, in, in that you want to make sure when you paraphrase other people's ideas, you're using your own grammar and your own vocabulary. So be careful about that. Uh, I'm going to give you a score right now, 2.16 out of 4, or 17 points out of 30 on this particular practice test.